Okay, welcome back everyone. Before we resume the program, let's uh, please join me in thanking all the poster presenters for a very energetic and interactive poster session. That was great. So we now have three uh, oral presentations that were chosen from the over 40 submitted abstracts. Uh, congratulations to the selected speakers, Amit Kumar in the field of basic science, David Murdoch in clinical science, and Shnita Randolph in behavioral science. Our first speaker will be Dr. Amit Kumar. Amit is a research scientist working with Dr. Sally Permar at the Duke Human Vaccine Institute. He's originally from New Delhi, India, New Delhi, India, sorry, Amit, and received his doctorate from Jawahar Lal Nehru University in New Delhi. Uh, his research focuses on HIV envelope gene evolution using the SGA method, and he's currently working to study the biology of HIV transmission from mothers to infants, and today he will present this recent work describing transmitted founder viruses of peripartum HIV-infected infants are neutralization resistant to autologous maternal serum. Amit? Thank you, Justin. And uh, I would like to first thank the uh, organizers of the meeting to let us uh, present some of our work. Uh, and uh, I work with Dr. Sally Parma, and uh, the main focus of our lab's research is uh, infant uh, HIV, or like pediatric HIV infections. And uh, recently, we have started some work on this peripartum HIV-infected infants. And I will be presenting some of the work uh, which we have uh, done in the uh, last six months to about a Sorry, year. Sorry? Okay, so uh, I'm going to present some of the work uh, uh, which is about describing the peripartum infection in HIV infected infants. And uh, to begin with, the, I would like to give you a brief background about this uh, mother-to-child transmission. And uh, about 200,000 infants get uh, infection uh, HIV-1 from their mother in 2015. And though we do have a good antiretroviral therapy in place to uh, prevent those infections or prevent this transmission to a uh, less number, about, about 1 to 2 percent, However, there are limitations due to access of this uh, therapy, adherence, and the resistance which comes for this therapy. And st still in this, um, MTCT involves the selective transmission of HIV variants. And as we see in this cartoon here, uh, donors quasi species is there, and there's only one which is uh, go through the genetic bottleneck, and this is called transmitted early founder virus, and that caused the uh, majority of uh, infection may lead to the development of uh, HIV in patients, either horizontal transmission or in vertical transmission, as I'll be showing uh, for the MTCT ward. And the role of maternal, anti maternal HIV antibodies in this prevention of transmission is we do not know anything about it. And the question which we are trying to answer is, do maternal antibodies drive selection of infant transmitted founder virus? So, before going into the detail, I will just show you the, there are three routes of mother-to-child transmission. There's one is uh, antipartum, which takes place in utero during pregnancy. And uh, there's one which we are focusing in this study, the peripartum, which takes place during the birth when the fluid gets exchanged or the infant uh, get uh, infected uh, during uh, delivery. And the postpartum, which, when the infant gets infection to the milk during the breastfeed. And uh, I want to point out here the 15 to 20 percent of the total uh, infant infections in the absence of uh, ARV are because of peripartum and uh, these are the ones which are uh, fatal mostly. So to, to continue to these studies, we recently got uh, a cohort, a cohort was made available to us within the U.S., so the, the women in infant transmission cohort. So there were hundreds of samples were available for this, but uh, we set up a criteria of, uh, to select the samples for the study. Though, and these, uh, one thing which I want to point out is all these uh, women, uh, like are the infant are not breastfed in this cohort. And the criteria which we have used in, to select these uh, samples is uh, all the those male mothers were enrolled in this in this cohort for prior to ARV so that we cannot, we can avoid the selection due to the retroviral therapy. And then the infants were HIV DNA negative at birth, however they were positive within the seven days. So to uh, define this peripartum transmission definition. And then the, another thing which we need to see is the infant plasma is available before three months of age. 
and the maternal plasma was available from the birth time point. So using these four criteria and the, uh, we were able to select about 14 samples from them and the viral load range for these maternal samples varies from 4000 to 360,000 copies per ml. However, the infant has a higher viral load from 11,000 to about 2.4 million copies per ml. So with, when now we have the cohort with us and now uh, what we the question which we ask is like how the animal of gene population from mother and infant samples relate phylogenetically and the sub question which in this is like the, do are the infant is infected with one single transmitted founder or multiple transmitted founder viruses at, at the time of delivery so in order to answer this question the methods which we have followed are as like the standard single genome analysis method where we do uh, envelope amplification by nested pcr do the sequencing and then do the phylog phylogenetic tree and the highlighted plot so we can see the evolutionary uh, distance in the tree for the phylogenetic trees and uh, the highlighted plot shows uh, specifically the nucleotide differences within the two population and further we compare the neutralization sensitivity of those infant transmitted founder and the maternal virus variants and uh, against the autologous maternal sera. So when we have now the uh, method set and everything now here's one example um, which I'm showing is uh, from the population the top part is in the shaded in the blue and the corresponding in the the blue spot dots in the corresponding phylogenetic tree, they showed the infant population which shows it's highly homogeneous and we can easily uh, find out it's single, see that there's only single transmitted founder virus, however the lower part is the about all the mother samples which shows a typical chronic infection and we see a lot of heterogeneity in the samples in these. And coming to the next slide, it shows the, another example where we see the infant is infected possibly by two transmitted founder viruses the, uh, in, as shown in the top blue part as all the infants, however, in this, we see in this part here, this can form another uh, second transmitted founder virus. However, we do see some of the infant, in the, some of the recombinants which are available in the infant in this uh, sample, as shown in the lower part of the highlighter. We, as these ones are how if you see this here. And there's another example which is about a heterogeneous infant infection we, where we cannot uh, derive a single transmitted founder virus and we were able to see and this actually infection shows that this may not be a uh, peripartum infection this might be an in utero because it shows a lot of develop uh, evolution of envelope gene within the infant and as seen in the phylogenetic tree and in the, the corresponding highlighter so now we have the envelope gene and uh, isolated from mother and infant. The next question which uh, we asked before, so before going to the question, I just want to show the proportion of transmitted founder virus in infant samples. So 50% will have one transmitted founder virus, about set five of them have uh, two transmitted founder virus as shown in the green and however the two samples as, as showed very lot of heterogeneity and we do not continue, we, we did not use those two samples in the further study. So we actually eventually uh, have data from uh, work with 12 samples so far. So the next question, now we have the envelope genes isolated from it. Now, you know, can the infant transmitted found, found a pseudovirus is evade neutralization by autologous maternal sera? So in order to do that, we just prepare this infant transmitted found virus pseudoviruses and tested them against the maternal sera and for the neutralization in sensitivity and this table actually shows that almost all the infant transmitted founder viruses are resistant to the autologous maternal sera How, only a couple of them have moderate sensi sensitivity as shown in the yellow however others all about 10 samples they are resistant and the, e even the tier 1b sample the infant transmitted founder viruses which are three of them they were even uh, sensitive uh, resistant to the maternal sera plasma further we did a bunch of uh, hot uh, neutralization against the panel of monoclonal antibodies and almost all the transmitted founder viruses were somehow sensitive to the monoclonal antibodies and in the lower part of the table I would just want to point attention to this the VRCO1 here we, the, almost all of them were sensitive to the VRCO1 so which is a good news for the current ongoing trial based on VRCO1 for the pediatric vaccine and after this, the next question which we ask is like, do the maternal variants 
how, how the metal variants behave uh, against this the autologous plasma. So however, in order to do that, we have about 20 to 30 amplicons per sample. So we wanted to narrow it down to some. So there's an algorithm developed by Alana Georgi, which was used to select the variants which covers the entire population and uh, the one which is closest to the infant transmitted founder virus. The arrow shows up here is the infant transmitted founder virus. The green in the lower panel from the blue, which is from the mother, it shows the uh, closest uh, sequence or the amplicon which is uh, closest to infant transmitted founder. However, the red stars which shows that the different uh, amplicons which covers the entire mother pop, which represent the entire met mother amplicons. So we made we did uh, we made pseudoviruses for all these amplicons by the overlap PCR method. It's hard to clone so many of them at the same time and we did for almost uh, we have the currently data from nine of them and if we look at this dot plot when we where we tested the infective the sensitivity of the infant transmitted founder and the maternal variants. So I just want to point attention to this, the lower graph where we have the red triangles which representing the infant transmitted founder viruses. Almost most of them were sense resistant to the, or, the, or, uh, the neutralization by maternal plasma. However, we were able to see some of the maternal variants which are actually sensitive and they are closely related to the infant transmitted founder virus. As we see the blue dots here, they are from the mother samples which are closely related to the infant transmitted founder virus. Next, the next question which we ask is like, do we see some unique sequence differences between this, the resistant transmitted infant transmitted founder and the sensitive maternal, uh, trans maternal variant which is closest to the infant transmitted founder? Because every study when we do the neutralization studies, we want to find out why these two have different profiles and people have studied the uh, V1, V2 and variable region sizes, length and the uh, unlinked glycosylation site analysis to see whether do we see any difference in it. So we did the this, this the question which we are asking is like the significant sequence differences between the infant transmitted founder and the closest maternal variant as I mentioned and we did the PNGS analysis for one of the sample uh, and this is the neutralization profile for that the sample as I showed this is part of the uh, graph which is in the previous dot plot the red is the infant transmitted founder which is uh, resistant, however, the blue one, which is uh, maternal variant, which is sensitive. So we did the sequence analysis for this, and s s the sequence analysis do show that there are about three PNGS sites which are actually uh, absent or getting changed to uh, some other amino acids in the infant sequence. There's a, the top panel shows there's a uh, sparagine got getting changed to the lysine, and this shows that there's one. Uh, PNGS site is getting changed. However, in the lower panel, which is from the V5 region, uh, this, this the arrow shows that the insert, insertion of D to the near the first arrow is eliminating one potential N-linked glycosylation site. However, the deletion of N, as shown in the second arrow in the lower panel, is showing that there's one more site is getting uh, mutated, and so we are getting ending up with low less number of PNGS sites in this infant sample. However, we do not have the data which shows that are these sites responsible for this sensitivity or neutralization, uh, or sensitive to neutralization, like are these sites causing the resistance in the infant virus or not. So we are currently trying to put these mutations in the infant samples for not, not even this sample, but for other samples just to see uh, do we have some signature sequence pattern which are going to point out, okay, this is bringing uh, the neutralization, neutralization sensitivity or resistance to the corresponding virus. So I would like to conclude here with this, the data whatever we have presented is like about half of the infant samples were infected with one transmitted founder virus. However, about 36%, which is uh, very close to the uh, uh, in number where we see in the MSM population, where we see about 40% samples show two transmitted founder viruses and the peripartum transmission transmission may select for neutralization escape variants and the, the deletion of PNGS might be responsible for the neutralization escape. So with this I would like to thank uh, uh, specifically a lot of people at uh, Duke, Elena and uh, Claire which dev, the, did a lot of uh, sequence analysis for the infant samples. Josh did most of uh, almost all the neutralization assays here and uh, I would like to thank other people at Duke. 
Elena for use, developing the software to identify those maternal variants, uh, the WITS cohort and the NIH for providing funding to the study. Thank you. Binding antibodies were a correlative reduced risk in this cohort. Is there any signatures in the V3 region in your infant transmitted founder isolates? No. In, uh, actually, we did the analysis for that, but we did not find any correlation between that. So that was something uh, we were puzz puzzled about it because the V3 was, as, as you said, it was shown to be protecting against the uh, transmission. Thank you. 